huge and positive news out of the United States Supreme Court. You're going to hear all about this in the media. I'm going to tell you what's really going on and why the anti-gunners ought to be shaking in their boots after today's Supreme Court opinion. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. Show your love for the right to keep and bear arms and help us get to 100,000 subscribers. We're working hard to try to get that number so we can improve with the social media algorithms. Huge breaking news. The United States Supreme Court has just issued an order denying the motion to lift the stay of the lower court's decision in the Antonyuk case out of New York. Specifically, the Supreme Court was asked by the Second Amendment plaintiffs to lift the stay that the Second Circuit Court of Appeals had entered, preventing the lower court decisions in our favor that had essentially declared most of the new anti-gun laws by New York State enacted in July of 2022 to be unconstitutional under the Second Amendment and that most of them should not go into effect. That's what the lower courts decided. And then it was appealed to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals and the Second Circuit stayed those lower court orders, just pausing them, not allowing them to go into effect. And then one of the plaintiffs in the Antonyuk case, the Antonyuk lawyers, sought an emergency appeal to the United States Supreme Court asking that the Second Circuit Court of Appeals stay of the lower court's decision, which we'd like the lower court's decision, we don't like the Second Circuit decision, that stayed those lower court decisions. The United States Supreme Court uh, was asked to lift the stay of the Second Circuit to allow the lower court decision to go into play, to go into effect. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court issued an order denying the request by the Antonyuk plaintiffs to lift the stay. However, that on its face sounds bad because it's a victory at one level for the anti-gunners because the stay that prevents the lower court decisions in our favor from going into effect remains in place. So on its face, that sounds very bad. And it is bad in the sense that we lost that battle. And I never like to lose any battles at all. I never like to lose anything. Nevertheless, when you're litigating in front of the U.S. Supreme Court and you're trying to win for the Second Amendment for all times, you have to be strategic. And here's the huge news and the very good news. Remember, as I told you in prior videos, I thought the odds of this emergency appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court were going to be tricky, meaning hard to win. And the reason why has nothing to do with the merits. So you're going to see that the Supreme Court completely agreed with me, by the way. You're going to see this in a second. What I said was that because the appeal was from an interlocutory order, meaning in the middle of a case, right? The Antonyuk case and the cases involving the Second Amendment that are going through in New York are A, very young. They just got commenced, I think, in like August and September. They've only been going on for a few months. They don't have a full-blown re record after a trial or after years of litigation. So you have an, sort of a, an early young case with a limited development of all the facts and information, and very good facts and all that, by the way, but still it's a little early in the, in the life of a case. It's only a few months old, which is very young for the purposes. It's really an infant litigation in many respects. And the Supreme Court historically does not like to get involved with interlocutory appeals, which I explained to you are appeals taken from the middle of a lawsuit as opposed to at the end of a lawsuit, which the Antonyuk case is nowhere near the ultimate end of the case. It's still going on. So I told you in light of those procedural, I repeat, those procedural issues, I thought it was a little bit tricky for the U.S. Supreme Court to grant the relief sought by the Antonyuk plaintiffs to the Supreme Court right this second uh, because I thought that procedurally it was a little bit of a tricky posture and I could see the Supreme Court saying, you know, we're not quite ready to wade into this just yet. It's a little premature. Uh, we're interested in this case, but it's a little premature. And basically the Supreme Court in their order today essentially agreed with me, but in a huge positive way. And I'll tell you why in a second. First of all, the court specifically denied the request for the lifting of the Second Circuit stay, which means that the lower court decisions in favor of the Second Amendment are not yet, have not yet gone into effect in the state of New York. So that's bad. However, here's what the Supreme Court wrote that's very telling. As part of the order denying the application for a stay, there was a statement made, and this is where it's all at. This is the key. There's a statement made 
by Justice Sam Alito, the author of the McDonald case, the person who single-handedly took on the Breyer dissent in Bruin and destroyed it. Sam Alito is a very important Supreme Court justice and one of the leaders on that court. So there's a statement of Justice Alito with whom Clarence Thomas joined. So you have a statement here from Justice Alito who wrote it and Clarence Thomas joined it. Here's what it says. It said, this is from Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito, Supreme Court justices, as part of the denial of this order. They write, the New York law at issue in this application presents novel and serious questions under both, under both the First and the Second Amendments. You hear me? That's what they said. The district court found, and this is the key language, the district court found, quote, in a thorough opinion. Signal! Thorough opinion. Which meant that the U.S. Supreme Court has read the district court decisions, and they found them to be thorough. Which is a polite indication of saying, we found them persuasive. Thorough. The district court found in a thorough opinion that the applicants were likely to succeed on a number of their claims under the Second Amendment, and it issued a preliminary injunction as to 12 provisions of the challenge law. With one exception, the Second Circuit... Now, here's the contrast. you got to read this stuff carefully at the Supreme Court level because there's signals sent. Polite signals sent. Here's the contrast, right? We just heard that the district court decisions by the Supreme Court were, were labeled thorough. Tell me if this sounds like a contrasting view when it comes to the Supreme Court's view of what the Second Circuit Court of Appeals did. Tell me if you, if you can see the difference. With one exception, the Second Circuit issued a stay of the injunction in full. And in doing so, did not provide any, did not provide any explanation for its ruling. Did you hear what I just said? Did not provide any explanation for its ruling. So here you have the Supreme Court saying the district court decisions in favor of the Second Amendment were thorough, and the Second Circuit decision against the Second Amendment was without explanation. Hint, hint, hint. The court goes on to say, in parallel cases, and this is very important, in parallel cases presenting related issues, the Second Circuit has likewise issued, ready, unreasoned summary stay orders. Let me repeat that. This is Sam Alito and Clarence Thomas in their statement associated. The statement is the key, not the denial of the request to lift the stay. It's the statement is the key. It's the signal to the Second Circuit, don't mess this up. That's how I read this. Here's what the statement reads. I want to read this again. In parallel cases presenting related issues under the Second Amendment, the Second Circuit has likewise issued, ready, unreasoned summary stay orders, but in those cases it has ordered expedited briefing. It then cites to Hardaway versus Negrelli and Christian versus Negrelli. The reason why those are significant is those cases were not before the United States Supreme Court on this matter. And yet the U.S. Supreme Court knows about those cases, which tells us that the U.S. Supreme Court, as I told you they would, that the U.S. Supreme Court is actually watching what's going on in Second Amendment litigation in America because they are paying attention to the fact that cases involving the Second Amendment that are not even before the Supreme Court right now, it shows that the Supreme Court is aware of these other cases that are not before the Supreme Court, and yet they know about them. Do you know how many cases there are in America? There's tens and tens of thousands of cases in America, and yet the Supreme Court is aware of these cases specifically. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, it's not. It's because the Supreme Court's paying attention. But it gets better for us. It gets better for us. Let me continue. The, 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 the Thomas Alito and the Thomas Alito statement is important because this is a signal to all the lower courts in America where their head is at. And if you're smart, you read between the lines because they're going to be very polite to you. They don't call you an idiot. Right? The Supreme Court doesn't do that. They don't do that. Okay, they're very, It's not a cable news appearance. They're very precise and polite, but they send messages in a subtle way that if you're a federal judge smart enough, you pick up on it. Okay, Here's what they continue on to say, and this is very important as well. The, court go, the, the, the Alito Thomas statement says, 
I understand the court's denial today to reflect with to to reflect respect for the Second Circuit's procedures in managing its own docket. You hear what I just said? This is exactly what I indicated I thought could happen last video I did on this case. This is what Thomas and Alito write. I understand the court's denial today to reflect re respect for the Second Circuit's procedures. Hear me? Procedures in managing its own docket. Basically, what they're saying is we're going to let them make this decision for the moment because we're going to let them go through the process. But the question is, does the Supreme Court have a view on the merits? Well, it continues on. Here's what they say. This denial today reflects respect for the Second Circuit's procedures in managing its own docket rather than expressing any view, any view on the merits of the case. You hear what I just said? Rather than expressing any view on the merits of the case. Again, as I mentioned before, the procedural posture is the issue that the Supreme Court's like, nah, it's not a great procedural posture because it's interlocutory appeal. It's an early case. It's an infant stage case. And eh, maybe we don't get involved just yet. But the court specifically said that. They said, look, we're gonna we're making this decision based on the procedural posture of this case, but make it very clear it has nothing to do with the merits. And the and this is the cherry on top. This statement here. And I'll tell you why this is so hugely important, not just for the, Negre uh, the, the cases involving Antonyuk, uh, the Negrelli cases, all the stuff out in here. It's important for all Second Amendment litigation in America. And this is where courts should take heed. <clears throat> this is what Alito and Thomas signal right in their opinion. Applicants, which is the Second Amendment plaintiffs, applicants should not be deterred. Applicants should not be deterred by today's order from again seeking relief if the Second Circuit does not, within a reasonable time, provide an explanation for its stay order or expedite consideration of the appeal. Did you hear what I just said? The U.S. Supreme Court is telling the plaintiffs, the Antinuk plaintiffs, and other Second Amendment plaintiffs, Applicants should not be deterred by today's order. They're basically saying that, look, don't be deterred. Don't get turned off. Don't get depressed. Don't get upset with today's ruling. This is a procedural ruling that's temporary. We hope the Second Circuit's going to get this right. But if they don't, don't be deterred by today's order from, again, seeking relief. That's a sign. And again, the other critical thing, and I'll leave you with this, is the this phrase, within a reasonable time. If you remember the Nicerpa versus Bruin case, they made a reference to speed. They said that, you know, while licensing permits and stuff like this, they're fine, but it can be abused. And if things cost too much money or it takes too long, well, we're not going to be happy with that. And that may very well violate the Second Amendment. That's what they said. They're talking about speed. Now, here you have in the statement by Alito and Thomas, Another reference to speed, right? Applicants should not be deterred by today's order from, again, seeking relief if the Second Circuit does not, quote, within a reasonable time, close quote, within a reasonable time. Now, that is important historically, and I'll tell you why. In the year 1954, the United States Supreme Court issued a case called Brown versus Board of Education that overturned Plessy versus Ferguson. And the reason why the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education was so important is it said that the doctrine of separate but equal was not constitutional and that you couldn't have not you could not have law laws that segregated people on the basis of race. You could not have a law that says there's a black water fountain and a white water fountain or a black countertop and a white countertop and so on and so on. So Brown versus Board of Education is very important. That 1954 case, because it says separate but equal, is not constitutional under the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. What is equally important is what happened a year later in what's called Brown versus Board of Education number two. Brown versus Board of Education two. In that case, the Supreme Court specifically indicated and told the lower courts that they should act, quote, with all deliberate speed, close quote. The Supreme Court told all the lower courts to act, quote, with all deliberate speed, close quote, when it comes to desegregating the schools and American life. Now, first case in 1954 said illegal, and the second case said you better act with speed. I think this reference here from Justice Alito in this statement signed off by Clarence Thomas 
using the phrase within a reasonable time, coupled with some of the language about speed in the Bruin case, is an indication, a strong indication, that this Supreme Court is not going to sit on its hands for another 12 years if lower courts decide to run amok and misbehave and not respect the Second Amendment like they did after Heller and McDonald. This is a sign that the Supreme Court is paying attention because we know they're paying attention because they talk about cases they're not even before it, right? Why would they even know about these cases unless they're paying attention to the Second Amendment litigation in America right now? And why are they talking about speed if they don't intend to act forthwith if, if, and this is the big if, lower courts screw this up. So I think this is a major signal to all the courts in the United States, in particular, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in New York, that you better get this right. And the Supreme Court has already indicated that those very powerful pro-Second Amendment decisions by the lower courts are, as not my language, the Supreme Court's language, were thorough. In contrast to the Second Circuit's stay order, which the Supreme Court referred to as unreasoned. Now, would you want to be the judge that writes the thorough opinion according to the Supreme Court, or do you want to be the judges that write an opinion that is unreasoned summary? Hmm. I think we know what grade we'd like to get and which one we'd be like we want the Supreme Court. I think we want to be the thorough guy and not the unreasoned summary person. So this is a message to the courts in America. So although the press is going to be like, Supreme Court doesn't uphold the Second Amendment, blah, blah, blah. That's what the press is telling you. I'm telling you, and remember, I tell you this geeky stuff uh, before in the bump stock case, I told you, do not worry about the Supreme Court denying those bump stock cases because that's those are not the cases they're going to take. They're going to take, in my view, the Cargill case out of the Fifth Circuit after the Fifth Circuit destroys uh, the ATF, which, by the way, on Friday did exactly what I predicted. The Fifth Circuit destroyed the ATF arguments on bump stocks. The Biden administration is likely going to have to take an appeal from that. And then the Supreme Court will get their shot to do what it needs to do when it comes to the ATF and regulatory law. Again, just to illustrate that you have to look down the chessboard here strategically when you want to win for the Second Amendment. And that is exactly what I think smart people are doing here in this country when it comes to winning for our constitutional rights and the fundamental right to keep and bear arms. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit of something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.